Last week, we had a look at the three Rebel Speeders. That's right, LEGO have made three different Rebel Speeders, and I highly recommend you check that one out. But you can watch them in any order, this one, then that one, that one, then this one. Either way, today we're taking a look at the three Stormtrooper dropships that LEGO have made. And before we get into the model, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory about the actual dropship itself, because it was introduced for the Force Unleashed game. Well, kind of, because LEGO's LEGO set based on the model actually came out before the game did. So it technically originated in a LEGO set form, and I think that's a perfect way to start with the first set. And releasing alongside the 2008 Rebel Speeder, we have this Imperial dropship, which is definitely the simplest out of all the models. It retailed at the same price as the Speeder, 979, which is so weird they didn't round it up to 999, but now goes for like four times that amount. And you can see at the back here, we do have a play feature, but it does come with some minifigures. First off, we have the late 2000s, early 2010s style Stormtrooper, and it's worth noting there isn't really a weapons rack as such for these minifigures. Before we look into the actual minifigures themselves, it's just a plate at the back which is clipped on. You can pop it off also to get some figures on, but again, there is a whole function built into the back of this ship. But I have positioned two of the longer guns, which it does show you in the instructions on top to act as some other cannons as well as these snot plates on the bottom of the ship which would have been really cool to see as flick fire missiles which were included in a ton of sets at the time but now let's look at the two different types of minifigures included in this set first up like i said we do get one of the stormtroopers which we do see into the 2010s a blank head underneath the helmet and we do get back printing though it's a very simplistic stormtrooper design compared to what we're seeing now and absolutely no leg printing on the bottom of this fig. We also get a Shadow Trooper, which is a very expensive minifigure to pick up, which is why I have 3D printed my helmet and used decals for the front and back of the torso. And it's worth shouting out, there'll be a members exclusive behind the scenes video alongside this one if you want to see how I work these decals because they've definitely improved a bit since I started. But from the cockpit of the Imperial dropship you can barely tell that it's not the proper lego minifigure and this cockpit is quite a big piece as it is as well we get three stickers on the ship one on each of the little wings out the bottom of it which is a feature that carries across all of these dropships and then one on top which is switched up a little more now when we are flying this dropship into battle or perhaps it's coming to pick up the Stormtrooper in a post-battle environment. You can lift up the engines here and just slide out this back carry platform where you can sit. You can definitely sit four or five troopers, though the set only comes with three to slot on the back. And then you can clip it back on, get the engines ready for takeoff. And what that does is locks in these Technic pieces on the back so it can no longer slide out and it is ready to depart to the next battlefield. 11 years later, LEGO would still be sending in the Stormtrooper dropships, and this 2019 version was released for the 20th anniversary of the LEGO Star Wars theme, so did in fact come with an anniversary minifigure in the form of Han Solo. And all of my anniversary minifigures aren't displayed on the platform, but are rather displayed in my display just behind me. You can see I do have them all through use of decals and other 3D printed elements to cut down on some cost to go towards some other minifigures in my collection. If you would like to see, I'm trying to get every single Star Wars costume on this display behind me. The anniversary ones are in the top middle. There's a whole video dedicated to it. Be sure to check it out. But let's focus on the actual Imperial dropship sets for the sake of this comparison. And I think the biggest difference that I do have to mention is the swap from blasters to these stud shooters all around and there is space for all four of them to clip in so we've actually got some flip fire studs missiles and that sorts 
which is something that only a handful of fans might actually like about this set. We've got a very large sized cockpit with a lot of open space. In fact, I'm going to bring back the 2008 dropship just to show you how much space on the side is missing and that'll be something you'll have to take note of for this year's new set. But like the other one, we've got the same mechanism on the back where you can slide out three stormtroopers. And as you can see, this is where the sticker is on this set. Rather than adding it on the slope on the front, which is a smart move from Lego, otherwise the sticker can be scratched by the stud shooters. You've got the stickers on the side of the back and they've built it up a lot stronger and added a lot more pieces to this to make it look like an actual platform stormtroopers can sit rest on and they even get a nice backrest for whilst they are traveling to the battle now a problem that you might find with these sets is that these are official lego stormtrooper minifigures i'm not sure if you can see the logo between the legs there and the legs have got stuck on this platform and it's because they're just down on regular Lego studs. Again, official Lego pieces here, and they don't come off very easily. What you usually have to do to get these figures off, rather than pull them straight up, is to sort of twist them off, which isn't ideal, but I guess it's better than the minifigures not coming off at all. And like I said, three minifigures fit here, which is a downgrade from the four or five you can fit on the last one, but it does hold still all the minifigures that come in the original set. And you can then position the engines back down, ready for takeoff. And I really like the inclusion of these wedge elements that clip on there. I'm not quite sure what they would be called, but they're the similar pieces used in the Thormec to have his cape accents. And I think they really add something to this set. As the set came out in 2019, we're of course going to be seeing the angry trooper faces underneath. And I'm so happy that stormtroopers have come a long way since. Once again, the shadow trooper is a really hard minifigure to get my hands on. It's nice that the decals do work with the legs being bent. And it's a very similar minifigure to the original. I would love to get my hands on one some day but for now we've just got the decals and 3d printed elements which again from afar through the cockpit do look pretty close as i've put the shadow trooper in the front i have noticed that there is only two studs holding that trooper on which is really interesting why they didn't do the same for the back but we're about to see an upgrade with the third release and again some more custom printed decals and stickers i have printed up close you can see the rough edges but from afar, they look like the ones that came in the official set. Now, we're only jumping five years later in 2024. The year I'm recording this video, we have a third and for now, final iteration of the Imperial Dropship. Though, if LEGO have released another version, I'm sure I'll be doing another comparison in five, ten, however many years time. And hopefully that one includes some Force Unleashed minifigures. But this actually came in a twin pack with the rebel speeder and not only did i include that in last week's video but these are actual mock-ups of the set because i wanted to take a look at these and not have to wait for lego's delivery this is an exclusive to the lego store so you'll not be able to pick this up anywhere else and if you want to see what techniques i use to build this they differ a little from lego i definitely recommend checking out the video it's 35 pound but does come with a, another set and you can see these are slowly getting a bit more expensive but we only get three stormtroopers you can see there isn't a shadow trooper in the cockpit but it is much easier to get the mini figure out and that is because they are seated well actually the pilot is seated on regular studs in my version but in the official lego version there's only the two studs at the front and if we take a quick look at the back which you'll notice the engines do not have to move up to pop them off you'll notice that both minifigures are sat on the same two studs that the driver was in of the last vessel so really big upgrade there and also with this larger size cockpit there are a few really big cockpits and if you know what the original ship looks like it is very interesting how they've tried to scale it down but use bigger elements for certain sides the cockpit does completely enclose the stormtrooper which is really nice to see on an updated take on the original lego dropship and i do feel like these 
anniversary sets have definitely taken inspiration from the original Lego set rather than trying to update it based on the model we see in the games. A few more stickers. Every one of these dropships have come with free stickers and something really cool about the engines is you can have them up for flight mode but when you're taking off you can actually drop the engines a little bit so that it looks like they are pushing off the ground as well as just flying the ship through the air. We've got stud shooters on both sides and a load of unique elements made to give detail to where originally wasn't much detail on the other two models. We have this bumper piece used on the side which is a lot more size accurate though I would have liked to seen a version with some wings like the original model perhaps one day we can get it. You'll notice that the base slides out because of some door hinges and these modified bricks that are used which I think was a really really smart choice to include in this newer set as well as a clip on either side for the pilot's blaster. One side does go unused but it's really nice because you could flip one of the clips the other way or replace it with a one by one to be able to display it without that blaster showing which would give you a cleaner look on your shelf. Though we're getting three minifigures unlike in 2019 when we got the angry clone head we are getting different minifigure heads. So first off we've got the female that did show up in a magazine over this year or last as well as two other heads which are completely different to this one we've got another female with a different skin tone really nice to be seeing not only different faces but also completely different designs on this because like the clone troopers they could just print the same face on this type of head piece and call it a day but Lego are going out of their way to use some other faces sometimes we see these on other characters that aren't storm troopers but i'd really like to see this continue into the future and perhaps one day they can randomize these so we're getting completely different faces every time we pick up the same set when i originally built this mock-up of the brand new dropship we noticed some bar elements on the back of the platform for the storm troopers which if you attach these one by two modified plates with the clip you can actually use to expand the platform that the troopers sit on and get a few more attached to the back of the drop ship but instead there was a comment that mentioned something about the new 2024 clone battle pack and specifically the speeder with the blasters attached on the back which you can do using those pieces from the battle pack or these from i think they're the fingers of darth vader's mech and that just adds a few turrets to the back of the dropship for your troopers to fire and I think that would make the set even better than it already is. Now I always forget to record this part when I'm recording a video and before I begin to edit I realise I haven't and here we are talking about the pennies per gram or you might have seen Fromania Brick's super proprietary ultra precise Lego review system. Also known as the Spuplers. Super proprietary, ultra precise Lego review system. Spufflers. The Spufflers. Well, I'm going to take a spin on that and create Master Moldy's Mathmagical Money Mass Measuring Metric, or as I like to say for short, M&M's M&M, M&M, M&M. It's going to be really catchy. Everyone's going to be using it in a few years time. But taking a look at how much Lego we are getting for the value here. Originally in 2008, the Imperial dropship comes in at a decent price for 9.79, 72 grams, gives us about 14 pence per gram or 0.14 pounds per gram. And the reason I don't give it in any other currencies is because I'm using the initial UK price. But I'm sure you could create a table very similar to mine with just the price, the weight of the set, including all of the minifigures, and these weights have been adjusted to account for the ones that I am missing. And jumping straight forward to 2019, the 20th anniversary edition, a bit pricier at 20 pound and not too much heavier, only 93 grams, which is an initial 20 grams, which is not far off a third of the entire set. So it's a lot pricier, 21 pence, which is more akin to some of the battle packs we've been seeing and the Y-Wing Microfighter, which 
the Imperial dropship was very much like a battle pack, both initially and now, but the newer one that came out this year is a lot bigger, 35 pound, 269 pieces. You know it's already lighter than the 2008 one, 13 pence per gram. So not as good as Darth Vader's transformation, which is still sitting at the top of the table. So hopefully we can find a set soon that knocks Vader's transformation off the top, but it's not gonna be any of these. The interesting thing to take away is that the brand new set is around the same price, a little cheaper even than the 2008 set based on the weight of the set, the weight of the Lego you get in, the minifigures. We are getting more minifigures, but it is at that more expensive price. So even taking away all of the minifigures, it's a similar price to those 2008 sets. But I think the most expensive one to get your hands on now is definitely gonna be the 20th anniversary because of that exclusive minifigure. But seeing these drop ships side by side by side, it really does show how far Lego has come in their design process. And though I really like the brand new version, especially with the more comfortable seats for the troopers on the back, I think both other designs still hold up. Now, of course, they wouldn't hold up if they were released at nowadays prices, but they hold up as a piece of history in the Lego Star Wars theme. And it's crazy to think 25 years later, they are going stronger than ever. And we're getting some massive UCS sets and bigger play sets. We're getting dioramas. We might even see the helmets creeping back at some point in the future. So stay tuned for more Lego Star Wars, as well as a few other themes that I've been sprinkling throughout. And let me know which of these dropships is your favorite. I'll probably have a community poll up in the community tab. Go check it out. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out the others on screen now. And as always, may the bricks be with you.